He lied um dee diddle died um do he lied um dee diddle died um do he lied um dee diddle died um do he heddle 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 hide um do war away the day burns Abbey what shabby in Dunfermline. Dunfermline Abbey. And just have a wee look at it. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. And just below, we have the gardens here at Pitting Creef Park, don't we? Where yep. we've just had a wee wander through and a wee picnic down there, eh? Yeah, it was very nice. And fed the squirrels and all the rest of it. All the rest of the fun stuff. Right, well, we go and have a look at this magnificent building up here. Yeah. Come on then. Now, I think we talked about this in another video, but what is so special about this abbey? They buried 17 people here, and they were all special people. What kind of special people? Kings and queens. Kings and queens, no less. And a very famous one, Robert the Bruce, during his lifetime, he said he wanted to be buried here to try and help with his legitimacy as a king while he was living. So if you wanted to be king, you had to get crowned and schooned up the road. And... You had to be buried here. And you had to be buried here. But I think what it maybe is, is they would have all been in the old one over here. So this is a new one there. Shall we go and check them out? Yeah. Come on then. Just look at this. This is a wee love heart garden here. Look at that. Let's have a wee look at this sign here. Yeah. And this will tell us all about it. I mean, just look at this. Pit and Creef Park. Pit and Creef Park, look here. So this was in 1540. This is what Dunfermline looked like back then with. 478 years ago. 478 years no, ago. 482. 482, right, let's go up and have a wee look at the Abbey. The Abbey Nave and Palace. My goodness me, look at this, eh? Oh, and look. And you get free entry to the Abbey and the Nave. Fantastic. Just look at this. My word. Now that is an entrance. We saw the entrance on the last church was pretty cool, but look at this one. My goodness me, indeed. Look at that. So what do you think of that, boys and girls? Yeah. My word. And then look here. Can you imagine how grand this would have been? Wow. Look at the size of it. It looks like it also got tons of tiny houses surrounding a giant one. It looks like a little tiny... Aye, that's what the city looked like, doesn't it? Little tiny houses surrounded by this. Oh, wow. Absolutely stunning. So this is the palace and that must be the abbey next to it, eh? It looks like a very selective like burial ground. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's only a few people there. And we can go in and check out the interior can oh we goodness. oh wow oh there's a sign down there there is let's go and find it shall we it's about, it's about the restaurant all right let's go in here let me go first and we'll have a wee look oh wait a minute here's a big sign you read this to us will it <clears throat> welcome to dunfermline Abbey and palace queen margaret wife of malcolm iii founded a prior prayer over here it became one of the leaders mon monastic communities in a favorite world where it's a burial place of kings a place of prime importance. Margaret, an injured princess, devoted her life to piety, charitable work, and her eight children after she married Malcolm at Stubborn Fairmont about 1070. She invited monks from Cater Caterbury to set up a priority here. Her son David I ultimately transformed it into an abbey you see today. Many kings and queens made Dumplem in their home in Mansolium. The abbey's guests started the later models in a royal palace. Wow. And so there we go. So the last time we were in St. Matthew's, we were talking about the Great Disruption and we were talking about the Reformation and things like that. So in 1590, the Protestant Reformation, they came and destroyed it. 
So that's why it's all maybe looking the way it is today. Oh gosh. And then Robert the Bruce had rebuilt it just previous to that, or a couple of hundred years previous to that. I mean, just look at it. Beautiful. What a building. Right, shall we go in here and see what we can find? Let's see what we can find. Oh, this is pretty cool standing away up here, eh? Yeah. Well, no, no. Wow. Oh. And now you look at the gatehouse there. Yeah. The Molasic Crescent Dunfermline Surrey. Precinct. Precinct. Was in fact surrounded by a small wall stone, stone wall. One purpose was to ensure the spiritual isolation of the monks, but it was also to defend them from physical attacks. Particularly in the turbulent later Middle Ages, when many people were prepared to envy the great possessions of the monks. Through this wall were several gatehouses, and most importantly, of which survives virtually intact. Wow. Let's come down here. Yeah. Look at all this. Yeah. That is magnificent. Oh, look. Look at these. So, look, we've got the old capstones here. Decorative bands. Look at that. What's this? Is this a royal seal over here? It might just be. It looks like it, doesn't it? And then what is this here, William? Do you want to tell us about this one? Yeah, cow So why don't you read it down here? The Archangel's message. The superb card and an association stone that dating from 1530 once formed the before window in the royal palace. And it was covered over 30 years later during the process of reformation. It was only revealed again in 1812. It was brought indoors to protect it from weathering. So imagine that, imagine having to hide that because some of the Christians weren't keen on it, eh? Yeesh! <laughs> right, let's go through here and look at all this. I mean, wow. my word. It's beautiful. It's absolutely amazing that they've managed to keep all this, isn't it? So we've got all the different types here. The carved capitals. Fragments of the foliage carving. Oh, wow. Here we go. Oh, look, so there's the ribs and bosses. So this shows you where these would have been in the interior of the cathedral. Oh, that one's pretty. Are they in the cathedral what time? Well, we're in part of it. I think this is the nave. So I think the, the abbey is across the road and this was the palace and the nave, the bit where they lived, yeah. adjoining onto uh -huh. the rest of it. So yeah, why, why do these always have to be so big? I know. Well, they were the king and they had to show off just how much of a king they were. They had to show off. They had so to these show have been badly damaged. You can see what it would have looked like, but yeah. still, you can still tell how splendid. I think that one's had a taste of a guillotine. It has, hasn't it? Right, well, we'll go back this way, see what else we can find. Also, why is the path here so ludicrously rickety? Well, these are the things. Oh, well, look it up here. So you can just see, I mean, this is just a wee extra bit at the side, but look how ornate it is. Do you see things like this anywhere else? No. Apart from in the kings and queens' castles or churches or abbeys. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Oh, William. What? Right, out of the way here, Clay. That's it. Would you like to read this one? Because this is what we've been talking about in our video, about who is actually buried here. Mm -hmm. From the time it was found in about 1070, it was Scotland's first bending. Benedictine Monastery, the church at Dunfermline seems to have been inverted to serve as the great burial place for the royal family. It was as comparable to, with Westminster Island in England, or the Abbey of St. Denis in France. Not all successors of St. Margaret and Malcolm III chose as their last and ethnic place, but the removal of those who did is impressively kept testimony to the continuing importance of the Abbey. The precise burial places of many of these are no longer known. St. Margaret and Malcolm III were buried close to the high altar of the original church, near the position where it was eventually occupied, occupied by the nave altar in the church, as rebuilt in about 1128. They were later moved to a special chapel at the east end of the extended choir, choir, choir right, in about 1250. Robert the Bruce was buried in the middle of the choir, in front of the high altar. Remains believe he were found when the new church was being built in 1818. Some other royal burials are thought to have been in our chapel on the north side of the Scottish and north transept of the new church are designed so they give them shelter. 
And here we go, it tells us all about Malcolm III, the first one being buried here in about 1093, just at the turn of the 11th century. And then we've got their children, Edward, King Duncan II, Athelred, Edmund, King Edgar, King Alexander, and King David. So lots of his children were kings and queens, weren't they? Yeah. And then we had Malcolm IV from 1165, and to King Alexander and Queen Margaret, and their children, Alexander and David, King Robert, the first, the first Robert Bruce, her daughter Matilda. Then we have Christian de Bruce, Queen Annabella, Robert, Duke of Albany, and Robert, son of James the Fifth. Wasn't the, James V go down to England to get? That's right. Yeah. So, so he became the King of Scotland and England. Yeah. So he united the kingdom, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Into the United Kingdom. Right. Shall we go back yeah. outside and see? Well, we have to go put on them to get back out, though, don't we? Yeah. Of course we do. But what if they fall? They don't fall. That's why they've been built like that, darling. Come and see, we'll show you. Why is it so rickety, though? Because those were rickety, haven't you? Oh, they won't break. No, they won't. This is where you get access to the centre, so they can't break. Literally. And just look at this, eh? You can see why they all wanted to come here, can't you? Yeah. Right, well, we. Because it's a really old building yeah. and you can't add things to it. So you can't just build big wooden walkways. So what they've done is build like a metal frame. So it, won't so it doesn't damage the building too much. And yeah, exactly. Right, so let's go and take a wee walk around it and have a wee. Oh! Wait a minute, we can go inside. Will we go inside? Yeah. Come I mean, on. If it did come to that point, we'd probably be able to re we'd probably replace it way before that would happen. Aye. Now, I am quite intrigued to see what this looks like on the inside. Because just look at these bits at the side that they've got for supporting the rest of the tower. Wow. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Mission 3. Oh my goodness me, look at this. This? Now, this is quite interesting, come round here. So, look up here at this stained glass window. Look at that one. These look like the highest quality. They are very high quality, aren't they? They've not been like damaged, not, nothing really happened to them at all. No. And just look at that up there. It's magnificent, isn't it? Well, have a wee look here, Will. If made for the masses. Made for the masses. Tell us all about this, then. Defined spaces. Before the Protestant Reformation of 1560, different spaces in churches, cathedrals, and abbeys would be very specific purposes. The nave was the public area of the abbey. The channel, which is these abbey churches, was the, more, was the more holy space, near the high altar. The monks worshipped and sang there, separated from the public by a screen. A man of many monasteries, monasteries that David the first made the very one of the most finest churches in Scotland as a tribute to his saintly mother, Queen Margaret. Before he became a king in 1924, David founded more than a dozen monasteries, a including dozen Scotland monasteries. and the European style of abbey churches and cathedrals. That's a lot. Let's come in here and have a wee look. What's this here? Echo! Oh, not too loud, please. There's other people here. My goodness me, look at this. Oh, so, where did we go to in Stirling? Mars Wark, that's right. So Maester. come here, what does this say? The, Ma the Maester of War or Wark. Right, read this one to us. Shaw, the King's Master of Wark, set down was built on the fraternal tradition of stone masses. His statues of 1598 laid the groundwork for the later society of Freemasons. Local associations of London and Sir by standard of craftsmanship. They assured members of held strict moral and spiritual values, demanding that the man should be honest, faithful, and diligent in their calling. Well done. Thank you very much, young man. <laughs> right, let's go this way. Oh, look, look here. What's this symbol down here? Do you recognise that? Is that the hills in Nepal? Was well, it? I think that's a Masonic symbol, that one. Okay. A Mason's symbol. Let's have a wee look. Even the doors in here are grand, aren't they? Look at the old arches here. And that stained glass, it looks like a UHD screen on a fancy new TV, doesn't it? Yeah. It's so bright. 
75 inch. A 75 inch UHD plasma screen, plasma screen window. <laughs> what do you think of this club? You've got wonder etched upon your face. You're not even saying anything. Look at this. Shall we go up and see what's through here? Yeah. Come on then. Looks like a giant hole. Yeah. This may be somewhere for the kings and queens to come, eh? Yeah, it's Yeah. Oh, so here we go into the actual church. Two church episodes in a row. <laughs> oh my word. Look at this one. Yeah, it's pretty ornate, isn't it? Shall we go around the side here? They probably still use us as a service. Well, this looks like it still gets used, yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, look. We've got a wee sign here that tells you about all the feasts and celebrations. Celebrations. And we've got the lion rampant's flag. We've got the salt tire. I wonder what that one with the crescent moons is. I'd be interested to find out what that one is. Oh my goodness me. Here we go. Look at this. Oh look, and then we've got the wee bits. Do you know what those little things up there are for? With the numbers? And the HY, do you know what those are for? Hello. They tell, yeah that's right, they tell you which number of him to look up in your book when you're singing. Oh Chloe, come here. We've got lots of stones here. Look at this. So is this, does people just put their names on them and put them in, do they? Yeah. Very cool. Oh, look, William. Here's another memorial, just like we see in most of the churches. To the glory of God and the hallowed memory of those of this congregation who fell in the First World War. 1914 to 1918. And those here named it. Who gave their lives in the Second World War in 1939 to 1945? There we go. And oh, and what does it say up here on the state on the corrugate on the iron here? Gloria in Excelsis. In Excelsis Deo. So that's yeah. quite a famous you say, isn't it? I've heard of it. <laughs> Latin. <laughs> and just look at it. I mean, St. Matthew's was lovely, but this it's is on a whole other scale entirely, it's isn't it? It's like one room, it's like two rooms. It's, it's more, oh, yeah, and you've got all the other bits, you've got the nave, you've got all the other bits and bobs. Hi there. You got a ticket? Yeah, we've been over to the thing. That's fine. Did you come in that door? No, came in the bottom one. Oh, right. Look at that. I love the organ. Come and look at the carvings here, well. They are very ornate, aren't they? And what's this down here? Is this maybe the grave of Robert the Bruce, maybe? Or one of the kings? I think this must be the Robert the Bruce one, isn't it? Because that's what it said on that other sign that you read. Robert the Bruce. Robert the Bruce. So this is where he lays, is it? Absolutely. It Robert de Bruges. Robert de Bruges. Brilliant. Right, well, we'll have one wee last look around and then we'll say cheerio. Yeah. Hi. What a place. Yep. Righty-ho, right, say cheerio everybody.